I love this mountain. I can see so much from here. So many beasts would need killing. So many drinks would need drinking. We ought to camp out here, you know? Take a fire, sing songs.
shreds, you <laughs> Hayes was the best self-sacrificing son of a saint I ever met. Halcyon is worse off without him. Now, if we're gonna lure the Manta Queen out, we'll need to find Rebecca and Anders. They took a UDL contract on Terra 2. We never heard from them again. I think it's time I call in a favor with Hiram. If anyone can track them down, it's him. I don't know much about it. It paid well, so they took it. They said they'd be back in a couple of weeks and that maybe we could all use the money to get off Monarch. That was a long time ago. I should have. I, I really should have. But soon after they left, Hayes and the others died. And to be honest, after him, I, I stopped trying because it hurt like hell to do so. Thanks. 
still not convinced I won't come to regret it, but we've started down this path. Might as well see it through. Maybe it'll stop me screaming at night. Now come on, let's make tracks before Hiram dies of old age. What do you think of the unreliable Parvati? There's always something to fix. And it's neat working in the Aether. I always took Atmo for granted. Now, if I drill through the hole, we all suffocate. Exciting, you know? I... I'm not sure I wanted to know that. Being in space sets me on edge enough. You know about stellar emissions? A actually, I probably shouldn't tell you about those. I mean... Not unless you want to know how we're all likely to get spacers long. Right. Okay. When we get back to the ship, I'm drinking this conversation right out of my recollection.
Did you have a sweetheart in Stellar Bay? I had a fling or two, sure. But on Monarch, relationships ain't usually meant to last. A lot of fools tried to impress me, feigning bravado in the wilds, thinking they'd catch my attention with their stories. It was cute. Not so cute when their act got themselves munched. You know what's sexy? Confidence. You know what ain't? Disembowelment. Here is 100%. isn't it? Nice views, a little exercise and fresh air. Well, in sulfury, spory air. It is a trek, isn't it? Almost like we don't have working lifts or roads. Thank you. 
And here we are. Told you we'd make it in one piece. Station ain't too far now. Get over here! There are marauders up ahead! Ah, no. How the hell did marauders navigate the caverns? This station's under the protection of the corporate compliance crew. You a marauder? Cause me and my sunshine? That's my gun if you were wondering. We don't take kindly to marauders. A coherent enough response, I reckon. Must be true. You're clear, but I would caution you against pressing on ahead. This station's plumb crawling with marauders, you know. I take it you ain't met the other C3s. Me and Sunshine are doing exactly what we've been tasked with. You want more details? You ought to talk to my crew. They're guarding a small barracks to the southeast by the edge of the mountain. See that path that runs underneath that giant archway? Follow it on down. There's a little station near the cliff. You'll find the rest of my crew there. There is nothing I'd enjoy more, but the C3s play it by the book, usually. Go petition the boss man. Maybe you can convince him to alter my duties. Stop! 
Hiram must have sealed the door. He's... he spooks easy. You may not realize this, being as you're an outsider, but the blaring alarms indicate the station's on lockdown. Which means you can't ever get to me. So leave already. <laughs> can't? We'll see about that. Here's the elevator, but thank gonna budge while this place is on lockdown. Guess we keep moving forward. for another way up. out there. 
whoever you are. Yes, yes, I can see you. Come here and talk to me. Face the intercom. I can't tell if you're brave or simply touched in the head. What in the galaxy are you doing sniffing around my station? Unless you are, in fact, trying to suicide by Marauder? And you, Nioka! What are you doing lugging a stranger into my station? You could use the socialization, you son of a bitch. Also, he hired me. To what purpose? I happen to have some significant problems I am dealing with right now. Marauders, running out of purpleberry wine three days ago, not being able to bloody broadcast. I see why Nioka tolerates you. Fine, I'll do the talking. By the hand of faith and my own cunning skill, I run this station. The Marauders may have other plans, and since my hired hands have clearly turned idle, it appears I have need of you. As my newest contractor, you may call me the Broker. Or we can call you Hiram, on account of that's your damn name, and doubly on the account of the Broker being a dumbass alternative. Everyone calls me that, aside from you. See, Nioka? I barricaded the broadcast center, but I can only hold out for so long. Clear the marauders out, and I'll pay you double the going rate. They destroy the transmission equipment, and I'll be out of business. The elevator and doors to the second floor are back online. Hurry before I have to lock them down again. Too many, considering I hired a bunch of no-good mercs to keep them out in the first place. Already they've caused considerable damage to the station's property. If they take down the broadcast equipment, I'll be out of a job, permanently.
Never thought I'd be ecstatic at having the walls painted in blood, but seeing as it's not mine, I'd say this calls for a celebration. This ought to square our debt. One hefty payment for a highly valued service rendered. But, I admit, I do wonder why Nioka has brought you to me. Allow me to pose my question in another manner. Why, in the nebula, are you here? That is the primary goal behind locking myself high in a tower. Some folks don't look kindly on me being a purveyor of delicate information. Phineas must have sent you. He's the only one insane enough to send someone to Monarch to rush me. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came a-knocking. Look, I might be late, but I fulfill my contracts always. Oh, you do, do you? I have lost track of the number of beers you owe me for chasing raptodons off your stoop. Are you fibbing? Be honest. I take offense to that. Look, okay. I was delayed by MSI and the Iconoclasts. The idiots were scrambling all transmissions to override each other's broadcasts. But as you've shut them down, I'm back in business. I don't doubt that you are working with Phineas, but my contract specifies I relay any acquired information to the purchaser and to the purchaser alone. However, to send the data, I will need your assistance in cycling the antenna's receiver so I can input the needed adjustments. You make it sound so scandalous. Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Nioka first, who I use as a physical go-between. The rest is history. Now you hold on. I do not physically go between anyone but that of my choose... Oh. Oh, apologies. You meant... Right. Yes, I brave the wilderness so you don't have to. Precisely. I really ought to give you a raise. Don't be ridiculous. We're resetting a broadcast tower, not filing taxes. There are no errands, spreadsheets, or rituals involved. It's simple, truly. I merely need you to waltz outside and throw the lever to cycle the power. I'll key in the numerical adjustments from in here. Terrific. I'll be here, waiting with bated breath. Give a shout if the panel electrocutes you.
Have some information for me? Oh, great. I love doing pro bono work for friends. Aw, you called us friends. I'd normally entertain your self-aggrandizing delusions, but this time it's important. Important to you is not the same as important to me. Although I do recognize that you may have earned some goodwill during your months laboring for me. Tug on my heartstrings, why don't you? Look, I'll do what I can, all right? Rebecca Hodges and Anders Wadsworth. They took a UDL contract back when Monarch went to ship, and I need to find them. I believe them to be on Terra too. If UDL hired two hunters back then, it would have been for creature clearing purposes round one of their spacer's choice outposts. These are the coordinates for the outpost under the last UDL contract. Now scram. And, uh, good luck. Is that a trick question? Because to answer it, you'd need to pay me. Of course, I could offer you a vastly more interesting bit of data instead. Try me. Ask me anything you'd like. I'll even offer it for free. We'll call it an exchange for your help with the broadcasts. Ask me what you will. Not much, admittedly. I do know this much. There is a sharper side to the good scientist than you'd expect. If allegations are to be believed, the experiments he conducts for the greater good are in fact treasonous and for self-gain. I am not convinced as to the validity of these allegations, considering the source, but I am also not unconvinced either. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. They are a curious lot. Insufferable. And short-sighted, too. What else do you wish to know? Some say Graham suffers from nightmares that leave him sweat-drenched and screaming. I would assume it stems from the friends and family he lost in Amber Heights all those years ago. You mean between MSI the Iconoclast and myself? I bet neither of those megalomaniacs told you I was the true mastermind behind Monarch. Back when the colony was still Terra-1 and corporations were abandoning us left and right, I'm the one who approached Sanjar and Graham with the means to our salvation. I offered them a legal way to take control of the planet. If MSI were the only corporation here, they could claim sole ownership. Precisely. Without me, they never would have done more than play revolution in hushed whispers over scuzzy kale ales in the tavern. Thus, the bargain was struck. They could run MSI while I would operate Devil's Peak Station. Unfortunately, relations have soured over time. Competing ideologies. Graham believes Sanjar has become corrupted by the corporate lifestyle that he is now similar to the original corporate executives they sought to reform. And Sanjar has learned the hard way that Graham is quite morally... gray. Sanjar is not actually at fault for his past performance reviews, but he can keep hunting for loopholes to get back on the board for the next century. He'll never be reinstated. Not in his lifetime. For Nebula's sake, even with the loophole I gave him, He's only in charge of MSI because every other exec died during the massacre at Amber Heights. I gave Sanjar and Graham legal information that would allow MSI to own Terra One once the other corporations had abandoned the planet. The execs had their concerns, but before the matter could be resolved, pirates raided their homes in the night. Luckily for you, I am a veritable... What? No. Why would I go out of my way to intercept messages from Earth? There's no market for them. No buyer means it's not worth my time. Now, if you wanted me to intercept a certain one, that might be worth it for the right price. 
There are so many members. Do specify. If you try to cite me on this, I will deny, deny, deny. Do you understand? What I am about to reveal is the sort of information that gets a body disappeared. MSI's ownership of Monarch is technically legal, but it would give MSI too much power on the board to grant them such status. Exactly. But you didn't hear so much as a whisper of such from me. Luckily for you... How low you seemingly regard my trade. Give my regards to Phineas. <laughs>